final resting place of ancient Egyptian queen Nefertiti could finally have been discovered thanks to advances in modern technology. For over 3,000 years, Queen Nefertiti's beauty has been worshipped, but her body was never found. This is where the Nefertiti bust was originally created. It's one version of Nefertiti's official portrait. She may herself have signed off on this image, but really we have no idea what she looked like in real life. Now modern science just did the unthinkable. It may have uncovered her remains, and the results are horrifying. DNA, CT scans, and buried secrets paint a chilling portrait of betrayal, violence, and eraser. Was Nefertiti murdered hidden in plain sight, or erased from history by those closest to her? What science has just revealed, no one was prepared for the mummy with no name, and a bust that refused to be silenced for over a century. The face of Queen Nefertiti has drawn the world in. Poised immortal, carved from limestone with paint that still clings to her eyelids like she just blinked. That bust is everywhere. Textbooks, documentaries, museum postcards. But her body gone. Her tomb missing. And now the one thing nobody saw coming is that science might have just found her. And what it found is terrifying. Nefertiti didn't fade away. She disappeared. Around the twelfth year of her husband Akhenaten's seventeen-year reign, she drops from the record not a single burial inscription. No royal tomb, not even a confirmed cause of death. Some experts blame plague, others said illness, but others quietly wondered if someone had deliberately erased her. Then came KV-21. In the year 1817, deep inside the Valley of the Kings, archaeologists uncovered a forgotten tomb. Two female mummies, headless, heavily decayed. No names, no jewelry, no rare texts. One of them, KV-21B, was tagged and shelved for study. For decades, nobody could get clean DNA. The tissue was too degraded, the bones too brittle. Until that changed in 2022, using next-generation sequencing, researchers recovered enough genetic material to run a full mitochondrial profile, and what they found stunned them. KV21B shares the exact maternal HLO group as Tutin Kamun. That means she wasn't just connected to the royal family. She was in it, a sister, an aunt, or most likely his mother and that pointed to one woman above all Nefertiti. But the real shock didn't come from the DNA. It came from the scans. When forensic teams ran CT imaging on the mummy, they weren't expecting trauma. But what showed up wasn't the result of time. It was violence. Arms broken and twisted unnaturally behind the back, a crushed rib cage and the skull, one side shattered clean through. Dr. Sahar Salem, who led the scan team, said bluntly, these injuries happen around the moment of death, not hundreds of years later. So now the question isn't just who she was, it's what was done to her. The bust may show a queen in perfect stillness, but what lies beneath may be screaming, and the sound is only getting louder. The tomb that might be hiding in plain sight. While scientists were analyzing broken bones and ancient DNA, archaeologists were staring at painted stone, convinced the final chapter of Nefertiti's story might be just inches away, hidden behind a wall in the most famous tomb on earth. In 2015, a wave of excitement surged through the archaeological world when British Egyptologist Dr. Nicholas Reeves proposed a spine-chilling theory after closely examining ultra-high-resolution scans of Tutankhamun's burial chamber. Reeves noticed hairline cracks and faint outlines that didn't match the surrounding architecture. He believed they weren't random. They were doorways that had been deliberately plastered and painted over more than 3,000 years ago. His hypothesis... Tutankhamun's tomb, famously discovered in 1922, was never meant for him. It was far too small, too rushed, too incomplete for a pharaoh Reeves proposed something bold. That the tomb had been repurposed in haste, and that Queen Nefertiti was buried in the chambers beyond, possibly in an untouched section sealed off by ancient workers to hide her after her death. The world held its breath. Scans using ground-penetrating radar, or GPR, conducted by a Japanese team, appeared to back up Reeves' theory, detecting strange voids behind the north and west walls of the chamber Egypt's Ministry of Antiquities, led by Dr. Mamdu Elder at the time, cautiously announced the anomalies could be empty spaces or hidden rooms. Whispers grew louder. Could Nefertiti have been right there, buried just a few feet behind her stepson's golden mask all along? But the follow-up in 2018 dampened hopes. An Italian team using more sensitive radar failed to confirm any empty chambers. They suggested the anomalies might simply be natural variations in the limestone. Still, the debate never died. Some accused the later scans of being misinterpreted or even politically motivated to shift focus away from Reeves' theory. 
What makes this all the more haunting is that ancient Egyptians were masters of illusion when it came to death. Tombs were designed to confuse letters and perhaps even future historians. Could Nefertiti's tomb be the greatest deception of all? Was Nefertiti Egypt's forgotten king? Long before scientists began decoding bones and radar scan tomb walls, a stranger mystery puzzled Egyptologists. Who ruled Egypt between Akhenaten's death and Tutankhamun's reign? Ancient records mention a pharaoh named Smanker, a shadowy figure who appeared suddenly, ruled briefly, and then vanished. But what if Smeker wasn't a he at all? This theory that Queen Nefertiti secretly became Pharaoh Smanker has quietly gained momentum for years. It's not just wild speculation. There's compelling evidence scattered through fragmented inscriptions and temple reliefs. Some show a female ruler with kingly attributes, including the double crown and false beard. Her name carefully erased in many places, but once written over Nefertiti's own titles. According to Egyptologist Dr. Joyce Tildley, Nefertiti was not only powerful as queen, but held religious authority that rivaled Akhenaten himself. Near the end of his reign, inscriptions show her being referred to with masculine royal epithets, something no other queen before her had ever received. Could this be a quiet transition? A royal rebranding? Adding to the intrigue, certain items found in Tutankhamun's tomb were originally made for someone else. Inscriptions on gold trappings had been hastily altered. Female pronouns scratched off and replaced with masculine ones. Some scholars argue these were originally crafted for a female king, possibly Nefertiti as Smecker, before being repurposed for Tutankhamun's burial. It's as if her memory was not just erased, but recycled. Even more strangely, records show that Shmina ruled for less than three years. Then he or she disappeared without trace. No mummy, no tomb, just a series of edited names and a growing suspicion that the missing link between Akhenaten and Tutankhamun was not a man at all, but Nefertiti ruling under a new identity. This changes everything. If true, it means Nefertiti didn't just vanish. She ascended, and then, like her bust, she was silenced by those who came after. The bizarre case of the younger lady. Just when Egyptologists thought the mystery surrounding Nefertiti couldn't get more tangled, another mummy stepped into the spotlight. The so-called younger lady discovered in tomb K-35, the same resting place that once held the bodies of Amenhotep II and others. At first, she was dismissed, unlabeled, poorly preserved, and lacking royal regalia. But in 2010, a DNA bombshell shifted everything. A groundbreaking study published in JAMA, Journal of the American Medical Association, revealed that this unknown woman was not only the biological mother of Tutankhamun, but also the full sister of Akhenaten. That genetic pairing ruled Alkia, another of Enoten's known wives. And it left Nefertiti, the only powerful woman unaccounted for in the royal tombs, back at the center of speculation. But here's the catch. Nefertiti was never thought to be a Kenaton's sister. Most scholars believe she was of non-royal origin, possibly the daughter of a foreign diplomat named I. So either the DNA is pointing to someone else entirely, or Nefertiti's backstory was far more complex than history has suggested. To make matters stranger, the younger lady's remains were found with a massive gaping wound to her face, her jaw shattered, cheekbone destroyed. This wasn't post-mortem damage. It was violent, targeted, and likely fatal. Experts like Dr. Zahihawas and Dr. Yosinagar noted that it looked like she had been struck with a blunt object, possibly even executed. The injuries mirrored the kind seen in palace conspiracies and assassination accounts from other royal courts. Was this Nefertiti under another name? silenced in the most brutal way, and hidden where no one would expect? Or was this someone else entirely erased because of her connection to the Amarna heresy? Even in death, the identity of the younger, Lady stirs anxiety. She was royal. She was close to power. And someone clearly wanted her gone. Some fringe theorists even argue the bust of Nefertiti isn't a symbol of reverence, but a distraction. A carefully curated image that lured attention away from what really happened to the woman herself. If the younger lady is Nefertiti, then she died betrayed, disfigured, buried without honor, and lied about for over 3,000 years. What happened to Nefertiti's children? While Nefertiti's fate remains an obsession, an equally chilling puzzle lies in the fates of her six daughters. Each born into royal power, each a potential heir to the Amarna legacy, and yet all but erased from the pages of history. Their names Marie Tutan, Mekataten, Anka Sempatan, Nefronatan, Tashrit, Nefron Nefer, and Setapanre were once etched into palace walls, appearing beside their mother in ceremonial processions, sacred rituals, and royal decrees.
but after year 12 of Akenaton's reign, their presence begins to unravel. One by one, these daughters vanish. Maya Ten, the secondborn, is believed to have died around year 14. A vivid wall painting from the royal tomb at Amarna shows a deeply emotional mourning scene over her body. But even this raises more questions. Was this a death from childbirth, as some have speculated, or something darker? The image includes a nurse holding a baby, an odd inclusion in a funeral depiction, unless the child survived a tragic birth. If so, whose child was it? Mechatens or Nefertides? Then there's Ankasen Patton, the third daughter, and perhaps the most infamous. After the fall of the Amarna dynasty, she re-emerged as Ankasenamun, the wife of Tutankhamun, her half-brother. But even her story ends in mystery. Ancient letters discovered in the Hittite archives refer to an Egyptian queen called Only Dakamunu, writing to the Hittite king, begging for one of his sons to become her husband because she had no heir. The letter triggered an international crisis. The prince sent by the Hittites was assassinated en route, and the woman behind the letter was never officially named. Many scholars believe Dakamunu was on Quesanun desperately trying to hold on to power after Tutankhamun's death. And just like her mother, she too disappears without a known tomb or confirmed remains. It's as if the entire bloodline was systematically erased. Why could it be that the daughters carried not only the blood of Akhenaten, but the political stain of Nefertiti herself? If enemies of the Amarna legacy sought to obliterate her memory, wiping out her descendants would complete the purge. No tombs, no records, no future. Even the youngest daughters, Nephir and Setepinre, are barely mentioned after childhood. No official records state their deaths. No mummies have ever been identified as theirs. Their entire existence is now reduced to a few broken inscriptions and wall fragments. The Cursed Amarna DNA Just when researchers thought they were finally closing the Nefertiti mystery, something unexpected surfaced. A disturbing pattern hidden within the DNA of the entire Amarna family. One that has left geneticists and Egyptologists uneasy. It isn't about identity. It isn't about trauma. It's about a biological signature that appears again and again in the remains linked to Akhenaten, Tutin Kamun, the younger lady, and now KV-21B, the mummy widely suspected to be Nefertiti. When the 2010 JAMIMA study mapped the genome of Tutin Kamun's immediate family, scientists were shocked by what they found. A cluster of rare recessive disorders, skeletal deformities, compromised immune markers, and congenital weaknesses. These weren't random. They suggested multiple generations of close intermarriage, a practice common within Egypt's royal families to preserve divine blood, but devastating on a genetic level. What researchers didn't expect was that these markers intensified when KV-21B's newly sequenced DNA was added to the family tree in 2022. One gene stood out the most, a recessive mutation associated with severe bone fragility and increased likelihood of internal hemorrhage. Experts at Cairo University quietly warned that such a condition would make an individual vulnerable, easily injured, slow to heal, and dramatically more likely to die from blunt trauma. This means the violent injuries observed in KV-21B's skull and chest were not only deadly, they were catastrophic. The kind that would instantly end the life of someone genetically predisposed to fragility. This raises a terrifying possibility. Nefertiti may have been targeted because she was physically vulnerable and the perpetrators knew it. But here's where things get even stranger. When scientists modeled the DNA lineage, they found interruptions. Genetic gaps that suggested an unknown maternal ancestor carrying the same dangerous mutation into the Amarna bloodline long before Nefertiti. Some theorists now propose that this mysterious ancestor might explain why so many of the Amarna royals suffered deformities, early deaths, and miscarriages. Others claim the fault doesn't lie in ancestry at all, but in environment. Studies on mummified tissues from the Amarna period detected unusually high levels of mercury, arsenic, and lead dust, all linked to the pigments used in the city's experimental sun temples. If Nefertiti and her family were constantly exposed, they might have suffered neurological damage, hormonal disorders, and weakened bones, a slow poisoning disguised as divine radiance. Was the Amarna revolution doomed not just politically but biologically? Did the religion built around the sun literally kill the family who worshipped it? For years, people searched for Nefertiti's tomb to find treasure, inscriptions, or golden masks. Yet the most disturbing truth may have never been in the burial chamber at all, but written in her blood, silently passed from one generation to the next. And now, 3,000 years later, the DNA tells a story no one expected and no one can unhear.
Was the bust of Nefertiti a political decoy? For over a century, the bust of Queen Nefertiti has been revered as the epitome of ancient beauty. But few realize that even this masterpiece might be hiding a deeper deception. Because beneath its limestone surface lies a mystery that modern science has just begun to uncover, a second face carved underneath the one we see. In 2009, researchers from the Imaging Science Institute in Germany performed CT scans on the famous bust currently displayed in Berlin's Neues Museum. What they found stunned the art world. Underneath the painted plaster exterior, the inner limestone core revealed a slightly different face, less refined with a more prominent nose and creased cheeks. The outer layer, it seems, had been smoothed over, reshaped to enhance symmetry and youthfulness. Why would Thutmose, the sculptor who created the bust in 1345 B.C.E., go to such lengths? Some experts believe it wasn't just artistic touch-up. It was propaganda. At the time, Egypt was crumbling under the radical reforms of Akhenaten. The traditional gods had been banned, temples closed, and power stripped from the priesthood. The empire was unstable. People were scared, and Nefertiti wasn't just queen. She was the public face of this revolution. So, was the bust designed not to capture her as she truly was, but as she needed to be seen? A divine, serene figure untouched by the chaos outside the palace walls? Others go even further. A controversial theory claims the bust may never have been intended for public display at all. Some scholars suggest it was a political prototype, a model used internally to shape statues, wall reliefs, and propaganda art across the empire. It was found, after all, in the sculptor's workshop. Not a temple, not a tomb. And unlike other busts of pharaohs or queens, Nefertiti's has no inscriptions, no name, no title, just a face, anonymous and idealized. This leads to a darker possibility. Could the bust have been intentionally de-identified after her fall from power, once her name was chiseled out of records? Was her image also stripped of identity? Left as a mask without a name to survive the political purge. And yet somehow that face endured, hidden in a workshop, forgotten for over 3,000 years. It re-emerged in 1912 and became one of the most photographed artifacts in the world. If her tomb was stolen, if her memory was erased, if her bones were broken, then this bust may be the only part of Nefertiti they couldn't destroy. But even it may not show the truth. The real woman, it seems, was carved away long ago, layer by layer. And what we're left with may not be a portrait at all, but a mask made to rewrite history. What if the most beautiful face in history was designed to hide a crime? Was Nefertiti's legacy rewritten or erased? Could her true story still be buried? Subscribe and let us know your thoughts below.